Hasanabi corporate. I don't even know what that is. As far as historical revisionism goes, by the way, because our 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 part in uh, endless amounts of historical revisionism doesn't specifically end there. Since Canada did a oopsie and had a fucking literal Nazi, a Waffen SS Nazi, a Nazi. Okay, which by the way, my hatred for Nazis have uh, never been higher. I've always been like a obviously an anti nazi guy but since watching band of brothers oh my god dude i've been my patriotism and anti nazi opinions have 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 flourished okay my god dude my god anyway there is a political article that is re-envisioning the waffen ss i'm literally looking at it freaking banana pants look at the screen Okay, very cool. We got some Nazis in the chat. Uh, nice, getting banned quickly. Anyway, as my fervor and anti-Nazi uh, perspective becomes more uh, uh, more solidified than ever before, uh, Politico has some different opinions, okay? Politico wrote an article saying, fighting against the USSR didn't necessarily make you a Nazi. Canada's hunka scandal is a demonstration of how when history is complicated, it can be a gift to propagandists who exploit the appeal of simplicity, which is a fucking psychotic thing to say what the fuck is going on. This is an article by Keir Giles, voiced by Artificial Intelligence. Fighting Defy. against the USSR didn't necessarily make you a Nazi. Canada's hunker scandal is a demonstration of how when history is complicated, it can be a gift to propagandists who exploit the appeal of simplicity. Keir Giles is an author and commentator. His most recent book, Rush or the yeah, Truth, yeah, yeah. has even got its boots on. And the ongoing turmoil over Canada's parliament recognizing former SS trooper Yaroslav Hunka highlights one of the most important reasons why. Something that's untrue but simple is far more persuasive than a complicated. Dude, I'm so it's done. I don't even want to read the rest of it. It's over. You are saying that a guy who volunteered to be a part of the foreigner brigade for the Waffen SS actually had a complicated relationship. That's, you know what this is? This is the, oh, uh, you guys put women in video games, okay? And you went too far by putting women in video games. So now I'm a fucking Nazi, except... Guess what? He literally was a Nazi, okay? Like, I mean, literally, the closest you can get to being a Nazi without being a part of the party, okay? He volunteered. What? I don't know how to fucking go about this. I don't know how to, like... Hello? This motherfucker looked at the Holocaust and said it was the best years of my life, dude. God damn. Like, you know, I'm no Stalinist or anything, but fucking holy shit. Dude, social fascism is so real. What the hell? Chill out, man. It's like, what are we doing here? What the fuck's going on? You're just actually, unironically, not even cutting a liberal at this point and a fascist is bleeding. You're just tickling a liberal and a fascist is laughing. How, 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 how? Why is this written uh, in a publication? It Like, this is, what is going on? This is like Stormfront shit. In the case of Hunka, the mass outreach stems from his enlistment of one of the foreign legions, the Waffen SS. Oh my God! Fighting Soviet forces on Germany's eastern front, and it's a demonstration of how, when history is complicated, it can be a gift to propagandists who exploit the appeal of simplicity. The history is complicated because fighting against the USSR at the time didn't necessarily make you a Nazi. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. During the world, during World War II, if you fought against the USSR, you aligned with the Nazis, and you were literally a Nazi. Okay, and not only that. But even if you were to say like, oh, the entire nationalist movement in Ukraine wasn't aligned with Nazis, even though, you know, that would still be somewhat historically revisionist, unless you're like literally talking about some edge case that I don't even fucking know about, okay, right? This guy doesn't even fit that bill, okay? Before the Finnish chirp and chime in, okay, I know you guys denazified your fucking Air Force like what, five years ago? Thank you for that. Except... This is even worse than that, okay? This is worse than uh, Finnish people being like, oh, well, you know, we had a complicated history with that, blah, blah, blah. Like, dude, dude, we're talking straight up 
Like joining the Waffen SS. I yelled too much. I got up and went to a different area in the in the room to fall asleep. As far as edge cases go, I guess the Japanese Imperials did also fight the USSR, but as you said, not this guy. Wait. Yeah. Exactly. They were bad. Hello? What do you think? I'm a fucking fan of Imperial Japan? What? Yeah, they were... Bro, the Japanese were the Nazis on the other side of the fucking planet. If anything... They got away with so much shit, okay? Shouts out to the Americans who allowed them to do that. They were fucking insanely evil, you know what I mean? Like, insanely evil. Bro, bro, the fucking Manchurian experiments, dude? What the f God damn, those motherfuckers were psychotic monsters, okay? <laughs> and here comes the at the beginning of the world war ii ussr started siding with the nazis hmm really interesting appeasement also occurred with the west as well i hope you know that and it doesn't fucking matter this is literally the same energy as uh, i guess you didn't know that the democrats were the ones who are on the side of the confederates it's like yeah did nothing else happen dude in between then that's really interesting what a what a fucking awesome uh, fun little uh, moment of history. Let's not examine anything else that happened after that, okay? Let's not examine anything else that happened. Every Everyone always goes, this is a new, this is the new liberal fucking counter, which is so stupid. Just like, you don't have to be ahistorical about it, okay? You don't have to come across like a dumbass hog just so you can do the fuck the USSR thing. You could just say you don't like the USSR's existence, you don't like what uh, Stalin did or whatever the fuck, and just keep it at that. You don't have to also literally turn around and engage in ahistorical nonsense as though, like... Like, as though the fucking World War II didn't happen. You know what I mean? Are you a fucking idiot? Wow, I can't believe the USSR engaged in a non-aggression pact. Uh, uh, and, and just like the West did. I wonder, certainly nothing happened after that, right? Certainly nothing hap happened after that. And the USSR aligned with the Nazis and, and, and started. And they were a part of it. They were a part of the fucking... <laughs> they were a part of the axis of evil. Also, why are people still doubling down on this? Everyone involved in bringing that old guy to parliament apologized already almost immediately after it happened. His dead discourse in Canada. Because I think there is a more important revisionism. Uh, there was a, there, there's a secondary reason for why people are still arguing this point. Just like the reason why this guy is fucking hitting this take. Poland took a piece of Czechoslovakia in the Munich agreement with the Nazis, so maybe people should stop bringing up Molotov-Ribbentrop. It, it's just... Like, Molotov-Ribbentrop is such an idiotic fucking take because the more famous thing that happened after that is what is important. Just like the West also engaged in appeasement, like, nobody, nobody's gonna fucking sit here and be like, remember when Americans, like, uh, I don't know, remember when Americans also uh, did that and, and that's it? Like, nothing else happened? Like, what are we talking about? Everybody knows what happened. Watch Band of Brothers, okay? They were fucking pummeling Nazi skulls, okay? They were, they were doing incredible things out there. Our boys were out there fucking, whoo, paratrooping, dropping into fucking, dropping into France, liberating goddamn European countries left and right. You understand me? God, it was so good. Fuck, I, I feel so passionate in my fucking heart every time. God, a band of brothers... What a, what a show. What a fucking show. It gives me such a patriotic boner. Anyway. Why did Stalin immediately start manufacturing weapons after the Molotov Pact? He was quite literally buying time for the inevitable war. What a fucking joke of an argument. I don't even care about that. It doesn't even... You don't even need to make that. Okay? You don't even need to... You don't even need to talk about every single Western country that made a pact before the USSR did with, uh, with, with Nazi Germany. All this shit. None of it matters. You want to know why? Because the simplest explanation is always the best one, which is that the USSR fought the fucking Nazis and won. That's it. You know what I mean? That's it. There's no, there's nothing else that you need to bring that, bring up other than, you know, what our boys did. Okay. What our boys did on the, on the, the, the Western front. Okay. And what, their boys did 
on the east. And together they were able to fucking rid the world of the Nazi scourge. Do you understand me? God damn, dude. Oh, I feel fucking passionate when I when I see brings a tear to my goddamn eyes, dude. They fucking took it down. They took they took that fucking gross empire down just like you can take the top of the hour ad break down with a $5 a month subscription. I wonder how many people Band of Brothers recruited for the U.S. Army. I literally would have joined. I'm saying, I'm telling you right now, if I was my age right now, because Band of Brothers came out 36 hours before 9-11, if I watched Band of Brothers, I'd be like, I'm enlisting. Where? I, I, need, to, I need to become a soldier. I will believe anything you tell me. It is the best. It is the most, like, effective. The propaganda worked on you. First of all, they didn't even do this in anticipation of 9-11. They shot it a year before 9-11 happened, okay? It was just incredible because it is... It, it, the only propaganda element of, like, Band of Brothers and Saving Private Ryan and all, all matter of different World War II movies is that it changed... It completely changed the attitude globally and allowed there to be so much anti-USSR, anti-Soviet sentiment in the immediate aftermath of World War II. The most deliberate aspect of the most deliberate aspect of World War II movies. Oh, by the way, here's the three minute break now. The most deliberate aspect of World War II movies is that it personally changed and rewrote history. For so many people that uh, everyone thought, oh, it's just Americans. Like, simply Americans defeated the Nazis and maybe a little bit of help from, like, uh, the, the, uh, the, the English, right? And that the, the USSR is just completely sidelined. And the 20 million, the 20 fucking million dead is just simply uh, not even considered. There's hella propaganda in Band of Brothers, dude. It's a great miniseries, but come on. I mean, the major propaganda, in my opinion, is the, the very little mention of Russians so far. And I'm like nine episodes deep. And they don't even bring up, like, a singular aspect of, of the USSR in that. There is zero mention of the USSR. Like, they weren't even there. Um, we're going to get back to the revisionist article right now in a second, but... Um, there is, yeah, first you convince people the USSR was an equivalent evil to the Nazis, then you can convince them that it was the greater evil, then that the Nazis were a necessary evil, then finally that the Nazis were good. Everyone who falls into this pipeline works to pull others to the level they're on while themselves being pulled along to the next by the more advanced fascists. This is by design. And I do think that that is where, what we are engaging in right now. This is why... The, the never forget narrative is so fucking important. There is a reason for why we must not forget the Holocaust so that we don't repeat those same mistakes, right? Even though one might say that there are active apartheid states uh, currently engaging in the act of genocide, like in Israel, right? Or there might be, uh, you know, uh, not full ethnic cleansing, but some level of ethnic cleansing and slavery occurring in the United States of America still. Uh, and many other places around the world. The idea, the idea that this is like, you know, the double genocide theory, I think was uh, originally very, originally very insidious, very cynical, oftentimes fascist backed propaganda that has now become the norm, like actively. And this, this also plays along with it. Senator, uh, Secretary Anthony Blinken. 82 years ago, the Nazis murdered 34,000 Jews at Babin Yar. Soviets buried this history, which today Putin's government manipulates to provide cover for Russia's abuses in Ukraine. The U.S. is committed to justice for Holocaust survivors and accountability for atrocities. Which is, again, insane. Soviet prisoners of war were among the people who were massacred at Babin Yar. Just like another aspect of anti-Soviet revisionism that is ahistorical and literally Holocaust denial almost, or not almost, Holocaust denial, Holocaust revisionism, is the forgotten side, is the completely forgotten side of like the communist, the internal struggle in Germany leading up to the Nazi party seizing power 
and what they did. Like the first people that were in concentration camps were literally communists. People forget that. Or rather, they never learned that. 82 years ago, Nazis murdered 34,000 Jews in Babin Yard. They're rewriting history and they're going to get away with it. No matter how much we can call them out, the propaganda machine will keep churning until a critical mass of Americans believe this nonsense. I don't even know what to say anymore. I love how they use progressive language to defend slavery. What is this? Hassan with the standard tanky racism where you treat East Asians like some magical race of superhumans who aren't doing the exact same imperialism we do in the West. He just wants the U.S. with a communist flag on it. I, I don't understand this. Like, does this person think it's, like, chill? Like, we should go, like, it's racist to say that, it's racist to say that there is, a, a like, any kind of liberation that could exist in an Asian country? Like, what the fuck? The USR lost more than 8 million soldiers in World War II acting like they were the main factor that destroyed Nazi Germany is absurd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I've covered the change in public opinion uh, in France specifically about who uh, shouldered the greatest burden in World War II that led to the liberation of Europe. And, you know, in the immediate aftermath, it was 57% USSR. In 1994, it was 25% USSR, 49% America. What happened between 1945 and 1994? The Cold War and a shit ton of, one, anti-Soviet propaganda, counter-revolutionary propaganda, but also... Um, what happened was the, the, the cultural imperialism of Hollywood that completely rewrote history. So that is the insidious part of that kind of uh, coverage. Which is why I think, like, for example, Call of Duty, like the original Call of Duty, Call of Duty 1, was so sick because, like, it straight up showed you... I mean, there was obviously, like, a lot of the Russians will shoot you in the fucking head if you escape or whatever because there were like a lot of brutal conditions in the ussr as far as like fighting against nazi but like the first cod single player campaign absolutely did an incredible fucking job of just straight up showing that the ussr forces were liberators right they did a fantastic fucking job it was like one of the few pieces of like american one of the few pieces of like american made art that heavily featured uh, that that heavily fucking featured uh, the the Russian side. Yeah, World at War. This part is yeah. Chop his ass up, dude. Oh! Oh my god, it's so sick. You can make it, my friend. You always survive. Do it, Reznov! Do it, Tovarich! As long as you live, the heart of this army can never be broken. Things will change, my friend. As heroes, we will return to Russia's embrace. So oh, fuck, I got chills, dude. Holy shit, I got goosebumps. So good. So beautiful. This is COD 5, my dude. I know, there was a lot of good... Um, there was a lot of good fucking uh, Call of Duty portrayals, like, before they went full-blown uh, nutty mode with American imperialism being like, Russians are the ones who are doing American... What if Russia was doing American war crimes that America never had to address ever? <laughs> like, the highway of death. <laughs> oh... Jesus. 
Wasn't that Battlefield? No, this was this was uh in the one of the last Call of Duties. So yeah, this kind of historical revisionism is occurring and it's insidious, it's nefarious, it's really fucked up, and it's very odd. But uh yeah, history is complicated because fighting against the USR at the time didn't necessarily make you a Nazi. Wrong. Just someone who had an excruciating choice over which of these two terror regimes to exist. There's nothing funnier than being a Ukrainian who sided with the Nazis when the Nazis openly said you were a dog and were killing your neighbors, and then they enlisted you to kill your neighbors, okay? And I don't mean just like Polish people, okay? But your Jewish neighbors, for example, so there is no two sides to that fucking coin. As a matter of fact, it's the one aspect of history that is obviously so close to our contemporary history and our understanding of society that, like, there is still a lot... There are still veterans, you know what I mean? Including the fucking Nazi that was, uh, you know, got a standing ovation in Canada. Why are Jewish and Holocaust remembers groups letting stuff like this slip into the mainstream media now? No, fuck no, they're not. They 100% are fucking attacking these people. Are you kidding me? No, they're not. This is one aspect that, like, they absolutely are, are uh, you know, they 100% they universally get mad over, which is understandable. The idea, the fucking idea, when you have, what, what is the number of Ukrainians that fought in the Red Army? I mean, I think it's like, what, millions of people the idea that, like, you will disrespect their sacrifice like this by propping up a fucking dude who literally decided to voluntarily join a group of people that were slaughtering his brethren, okay, his countrymen, and also literally jailed his fucking leaders. They didn't even give a shit. The Banderites targeted Ukrainians who openly opposed the fascist platform too, and they and then they were jailed too. That's the other part. Like they saw, they considered you to be a dog, and you fucking volunteered with the people who thought you were a dog. You were you were worthless. They jailed your fucking leaders. Not a the the biggest L of all time. Thinking like, oh, these guys are totally going to give us liberation. According to research, during 1943 to 1945, about 4.5 million Ukrainians became Red Army soldiers. After June 1944, 33% of the Soviet Red Army consisted of Ukrainians. The loss of Ukrainian people during World War II account for 19 to 35% of total USSR losses. Unimaginable amounts of sacrifice. Millions of Ukrainians served in the Red Army with thousands of generals and officers being Ukrainian. About 100,000 served as fascist collaborators, and this is who the West remembers. Exactly. It's harder to find the... If we're looking at it objectively from uh, just a mathematical conundrum, it is quite literally harder to find fascist collaborators than those who served under the Red Army. Okay? And yet, the West still seems to take on that mountainous burden, that unimaginable task, and they still end up somehow finding the fucking Nazis to prop up. That is crazy to me. The USR had a horrible track record against ethnic minorities. I do not get how you people can justify your commie boners. Fuck Nazis, of course, but goddamn. I don't know who you are talking to. Okay? I do not know who the fuck you're talking to because we are specifically... You're, you're, you're shadow boxing with a made-up person. Okay? I think... That is one of the major issues with the USSR, specifically as it pertains to something that you shouldn't ever do again. It is such an odd thing to come in here and then turn around and bring this up. Like, it's like when I... Dude, you know what this is like? This is like when I talk about how fucking hoorah I am thinking about what, uh, American liberators, right? I'm like, hell yeah, brother. They fucking went in. Our boys went in there and they fucking busted Nazi skulls. And you're like, well, what about the invasion of Iraq? It's like, dog, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? I'm not talking about that at all. You know what my opinion is on that shit. So why don't you ever come in here and when I fucking go hoorah about killing Nazis on the American side, nobody ever turns around and goes, uh, well, actually, Hassan, 
What about Vietnam? It's like, what are you fucking stupid? That's not, am I talking about Vietnam? No, shut the fuck up. I'm talking about World War II. Suck my cock, okay? It's so fucking stupid and it's so transparently propaganda that is nefarious, okay? That is precisely the reason why it only goes in one direction. Whenever you bring up USSR's victories in World War II, they go, the USSR was fucking, blah, they were so bad, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, blah, blah, blah. but they never fucking talk about Americans when I'm talking about American victories in World War II. You want to know why? Because they're one-sided. That's why. They do not give a shit about the USSR or America's victories in World War II. They just give a shit about being anti-USSR. So odd. The history is complicated. It's not. Uh, however, the idea of foreign volunteers and conscripts were being allocated to the Waffen SS rather than the Wehrmacht on administrative rather than ideological grounds is a hard sell for audiences to believe the SS's primary task was genocide. Whoa. This guy isn't just doing propaganda for this one specific Ukrainian. He's doing propaganda for the entire SS, which is pretty fire. That's sick. So the SS's primary task wasn't genocide, according to this guy. And simple narratives like everybody in the SS was guilty of war crimes are more pervasive because they're much simpler to grasp. That's awesome. That Politico wrote an article in Politico EU where this possibly is illegal for the record. Okay? That like, that we, we moved on from the clean Vermont theory to the clean SS theory. Okay? It's not just that like, Oh, the, the Vermont, like, well, those guys, they should, they were just following orders and they should not have actually, uh, you know, been, been put to the task. This motherfucker said, actually the SS was good as well. Some people. Canada's enemies have thus latched onto the simple narratives alongside concerned citizens in Canada itself with the misstep over Hunka being used by Russia and its backers. Like the misstep over Hunka being used by Russia and his fucking backers, brother, He's a Nazi. And the Canadian Parliament propped him up. Like, your worldview has to be so distorted. It's so funny. We are now uh, at, at, a, at a point where it's just like, straight up, I'm so horny to be anti-USSR, anti-socialist, anti-communist, that I'm actually handing it to the fucking Nazis moment. I had a history professor who's focused on the Holocaust who told us to never forget amidst the Nazi soldiers who were generals and thousands of apathetic German citizens, business owners, and community leaders who watched the Holocaust happen, which is just as evil as doing the fighting on the front lines. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently there's a good chance that the guy you play in Call of Duty World of War could have been a Turkic Muslim because the division he's a part of is a real division founded by Muslim Soviets in the 1920s. According to Russia's ambassador in Canada, Hunka's unit committed multiple war crimes, according to him, including mass murder against the Russian people, ethnic Russians, is a proven fact. But, whether, but whenever a Russian official calls something a proven fact, it should set off alarms. Oh my God, he's literally just doing propaganda for the Waffen-SS Galicia Division, which was heavily... But like, this kind of stuff, you're, you're at this point, you're literally just doing straight-up Holocaust denial. Okay? This article is doing Holocaust denial. Repeated exhaustive investigations, including by not only the Nuremberg trials, but also the British, Canadian, and even Soviet authorities, led to the conclusion that no war crimes or atrocities had been committed by this particular unit. That is... That's false. No, that is literally false. That's not... They, they at least killed 100 Jews, if I'm not mistaken. I remember seeing that in Ukraine. Anti-partisan actions with Kampfgruppe Beersdorf. 100, 100 Jews and then uh, and, and a fuck ton of Polish people. The judgment in Nuremberg against major war criminals found that all persons who have been officially accepted as members of the SS after 1st September 1939 were declared criminal according to Article 6, Article 6 of the Charter with the exception of those who were drafted into membership by the state and did not commit crimes. Members of the 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of the SS were volunteers and members of the SS. They were also found guilty of the war crimes by the head of the Commission for Prosecution of Crimes Against the Polish Nation and the Institute of History at the Ukrainian Academy of Scientists. No individual among the enlisted men of the 14th have yet been prosecuted or individually for any war crimes. By the end of the war, most of the officers of the 14th were either killed or missing. That's it. So, as it, this is... Yeah, anti-partisan actions equals war crimes. Whether they would massacre entire villages under your guise of anti-partisan activity. So Hunka could still be processed? Yes. Poland, as a matter of fact, has 
asked to extradite Hunka to Poland to be tried for his Nazi war crimes, which would be fucking fire. They should do that. If Canada wants to, uh, if Canada wants to, to make right for their obvious wrongs in this regard, they should start extraditing all of the Ukrainian Nazis to Poland. And have them be tried because that is what is just. But this is just the latest twist in a long time running campaign. Yeah, this is actually Russian propaganda. Like, brother, you're doing Nazi Germany propaganda while talking about Russian propaganda. Did the Russian government immediately take advantage of this? Yes, they did. Why do you hand a dub to the Russians in this regard? And why, instead of re-examining how horny you were to be so anti-Russian that you're doing Nazi propaganda, that you're still running along with a narrative that further solidifies your perspective as like someone who's a Nazi defender and a Holocaust revisionist, instead of just going, yeah, we fucked up, um, we should extradite this guy. Yes, it's not just enemies of democracy that are subscribing to the seductively simple. Jewish advocacy groups in Canada have been understandably loud in their condemnation. But here, too, accusations risk being influenced by misconception. Bro, I'm sorry. This is literally the same fucking energy as Ben Shapiro defending Ann Coulter for anti-Semitism uh, anti because she defends Israel, right? She's an ally to Israel, so it's fine if she's anti-Semitic. I don't care. That's what Ben Shapiro has said in the past, right? Um, but in this circumstance, it's even worse... Because you're literally defending a Nazi, like an actual fucking Nazi, and, and whitewashing his, uh, uh, his participation in war crimes, okay? You're whitewashing his participation in war crimes because he's anti-USSR. Like, you're so horny against a non-existing state, right? And you're so angry about uh like communism and socialism in uh, general that you are quite literally defending nazis one step further than like uh benjamin defending and coulter saying anti-semitic shit it is really fucking insane that uh we live now in a time and place where people just people not on stormfront not on 4chan, but instead straight up on fucking Politico are whitewashing, not even doing the clean Vermont theory, but whitewashing SS war criminals. Like this guy's basically saying, oh, they're, these, these Jews are duped into getting angry about a fucking Nazi SS war criminal. Just suck it the fuck up, you know what I mean? The Friends of Simon Weisenthal Center registered as outrage, noting that Hunka's unit's crimes against humanity during the Holocaust are well-documented, a statement that doesn't seem to have any more substance than the accusation by Russia. The result of all of this is that otherwise intelligent people are now trying to outdo each other in the course of evidence-free condemnation. Yeah, this guy's this guy doing like the Russell Brand Defender-style defense, uh, but for a Nazi. Just He's like, oh man, they're... There's no evidence here. Oh, this is a uh, this is cancel culture. I can't believe they're doing cancel culture. There's no evidence that this fucking Nazi who volunteered this fucking Nazi who volunteered for the Waffen SS actually did any Waffen SS type uh, Nazi crimes, even though technically he is, uh, you know, a, a Nazi. Wow. Pretty sure this article is illegal in Germany and Austria. I, yeah, 100%. Hunka is now so old that he thought it was a good idea not to hide, to not hide in Canada, but to receive a standing ovation on a national stage. No, my friend, it's not that he was old. It's that that is the level of comfort that people who aligned with the Nazis have in a place like Canada in the Western world in general. But specifically, it, the, the Ukrainian-Canadian diaspora and the anti-USSR uh, Nazis that uh, exist in it have always been very horny to just, like, whitewash their atrocities. That's why we covered the actual fucking... Uh, that's why we covered the, the, the ridiculous... Uh, you know, the ridiculous hate crimes where a Nazi statue was defaced in Canada and the police opened a fucking hate crime investigation to the guys who defaced it. 
It is not whitewashing of the SS is legal in Germany. Wait, what? To achieve these aims, organizations use contracts with political parties. In the years following World War II, the Allied occupational authorities in Germany implemented policies which included demilitarization, denazification, democratization, and decentralization. The Allies' attempts were often perceived by the occupied population as victor's justice and met with limited success. Is this the Daughters of the Confederacy, but for the Waffen SS? Is that what's going on? The Mutual Aid Association of Former Waffen SS Members was a lobby group and a denialist veterans organization founded by former high-ranking Waffen SS personnel in West Germany in 1951. Its main objective was to achieve legal, economic, and historical rehabilitation of the Waffen SS. Oh my God, dude. God, I fucking hate reactionary pieces of shit so goddamn much. Liberals get up and say, are there civil liberties for the fascists? Are they going to have newspapers and radio? The passion and concern they feel for the fascists who were destroying and murdering people the day before. Liberals will get up and say, are there civil liberties for the fascists? Michael Parenti. The Ukrainian-Canadian diaspora was very left-wing until these Nazi fucks got imported in. They turned what used to be a burgeoning and active trade unionist and socialist community into little Hitlerites, too. Yeah. Are we still on the Twitter drama? Bro, I'm sorry, but, like, a major publication writing a fucking opinion piece defending an actual Waffen-SS Nazi is a little bit beyond, you know... Twitter drama, I would say, especially when it perfectly aligns with like uh, uh, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken also doing Holocaust revisionism to, in an effort to like fuck over the USSR, right? Like this is an active and deliberate attempt to to whitewash historical wrongs with the with you know with the express purpose of of trying to cut propaganda against uh, the Soviets or whatever. A country that doesn't even fucking exist. God damn it. Ukrainian-Canadian political science professor Ivan Kachanovsky stated that the supporters of the SS Galicia Division in Canada, where many of their members immigrated after the Second World War, attempted to portray it as a patriotic military formation despite its collaboration with the Third Reich and its responsibility in the mass killing of Jews, Ukrainians, and Poles. <laughs> 